Another episode of the Chad Townsend Show, and on today's episode, I have Toby Rudolph. Toby, welcome to the show, Braz. Thank you very much, Chad. It's a pleasure to be here. Woo! That's actually the first time I've used that. Okay, don't do it again. <laughs> that little... <laughs> no, it was good. Bad, it. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. What's been happening, brother? I uh, got flogged today. You'd know you were there. <laughs> it was pretty hard. Um, man, that, what a sesh, man. Oh, it was ridiculous. It was so hard, but good. Good. <laughs> Builders is a club, for sure. How... How have you found preseason this year? Because like it's been, it's been tough, eh? Yeah, it's been hot and yeah. it's been a lot of running. Yeah, that's, that's like sort of the way I found it. You sort of summed it up pretty well there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, because notoriously, before I was at the Sharks, I always heard how easy the preseason was. Yeah, well, it's funny you say that because I don't feel like it's it, it was never that easy. Like it last was, year was a joke. Apparently, compared to a few other teams, it was comparably, yeah. but. Yeah. It, yeah, it's been hard, hey. It's been ridiculous. Like it's it's sort of like you know, I was at CS before when I was younger and uh, when I was twenty one, and that preseason was it definitely was you know on par with this one. So I've done this sort of training before, but I feel for the lads that are younger that have been here the whole time that haven't experienced it. And mm. I used to tell them all the time, like last year, this is not what a normal preseason is like. Yeah. you guys don't actually know. Like this is this is grouse. Like enjoy this, <laughs> and uh, this year it's just back to normal. It's sort of stuff. You know, I've experienced it before, so I know it's coming, but it still doesn't make it any easier. It's still like, you know, off its head hard. Yeah, just, yeah. You know, put your head down and deal with it. <laughs> we'll talk a bit about preseason later on, but we'll take it back to young Dolph. Mm. Was Tobias Rudolph. Tobias where, Eric Rudolph. Tobias Eric Rudolph. Where'd you grow up? I uh, grew up in Maroubra. In a, uh, off, it's called Lexo, to those who know it. Uh, Lexington Place. Yep. Um, yeah, you're a boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it, was, it was sort of like this Lexo is like this housing commission uh, Area in South Maroubra um, Mum still lives there now I've, I was there from 3 till 20 21 yep. Before I moved to Brizzy so I grew up there my whole life Always been in the same house um, Love the area Still live there now uh, Love the community Love everything about it Love the beach The beach lifestyle It's just sort of you know So ingrained in me It's sort of almost you know to an extent, a big part of me, who I am and stuff, you know. What was uh, your junior club? The South Eastern Seagulls, under-12 premiers. <laughs> <laughs> so that's like in and around Maroubra? Yeah, it's Malabar. It's like the next yep. beach down yep, from yep, Maroubra. Yep. Yeah, nice. Did you play any other sports as a young fella? I was a nipper. Yep. Did nippers and stuff. That was pretty fun. Yep. Uh, I used to walk around my budgies when I was like from the age of maybe 6 to 12. Yep. And I saw my brother once. He was like 17 and starting to be heaps cool and that. And he goes, what are you walking around your buddies for, you little Derek? <laughs> and I was so embarrassed. I never wore them again until I was like maybe 20. Uh, but yeah, I used to do nippers. I used to do, uh, if I touch footy, I was tag, all sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. What else? Uh, I think that was really about it. Uh, union. I played union more than league when yeah. I was younger. I uh, came through the un- union ranks. Uh, wore a 20s, that sort of stuff. Yep. Union schools. Uh, and then league was always a little part of it, but then I just focused on union from maybe... S- like 15 onwards was just union, that was it. And then I came back to league when I was 19. Yeah, nice. And you and your brother are quite close, eh? Hey? Is he older yeah. than you? Yeah, I don't. Is it not obvious? Well, it's hard to tell. Are you kidding? He just looks so old. Yeah, but it's hard to <laughs> tell these days. No, he's going to watch this and just laugh his <laughs> off. He's going to love that. Show. He'll like that. He'll love that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, can't th- I don't think I've met him yet. He I'm was in the sheds, remember? He was in the sheds oh, for the wait. debut. Yeah, 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 yeah. Rainbow head? I remember that. Yes, yeah, yeah, so I remember yeah, yeah, yeah. And I remember, yep, yep. Yeah, no, he's 30. He's 30, so he's five and a half years older. Yeah. I can't believe he's asking that. <laughs> well, next so is that good for him or bad for you? No, it's bad no, for both. It's both. It's good for him and bad for me. <laughs> um, which NRL team did you follow as a young fellow? I was a Rooster supporter. Are you kidding? Die hard. Like the do- most die hard Rooster supporter you've ever seen. So still doing that. Had like, I don't know, mum didn't want me to go for South because where I grew up, I think she didn't want me to hang out with like the South kids. <laughs> So she wanted to go for the Roosters, and she grew up in Bondi, I'm pretty sure. So she like loved the Roosters, and I therefore loved the Roosters. Had like I still got like the air finger, yep. the beanie, the jerseys, shorts, everything. You, can, you name it, I, I have it as a, as a kid, as a youngster. 
So growing up in Maroubra, was there like, you know, I obviously grew up in the Shire, but we would hear things about, you know, the Bra Boys and all that. Mm. Like, was there much, what did you make of like the Bra Boys? Was there much sort of cult, surf culture around them? Did you know, do you know much of those boys? Are you friends with them? Like, what's the go? Yeah, when I was younger, um, I sort of directed, like my brother and my mum didn't really get on when I was younger. Uh, and I blamed the Bra Boys for that, even though I just didn't know anything. I was just young and... You know, heard those sort of rumours as well growing up there and just sort of, you know, put the blame to them and um, even though that's not the case at all. Uh, and then sort of like growing up now and knowing more now, um, yeah, like a lot of my mates and, us, you know, my brothers. Because uh, they kind of got a bad rep. Massively some, bad, yeah. Because yeah. um, it was just sort of like, it wasn't even that bad. It was just, there was one time, and it's in the movie as well. I don't know if you've seen the, it's in the movie. Oh, years ago. There was like a big punch up with the cops in uh, Coogee RSL, I think it was. Yeah. And it was pretty bad. But from what my memory, the cops sort of started it. Anyway, it doesn't matter who started it, who didn't start it. But it was a full fight with the cops. And mm. that was like one big thing. And it was just sort of like a bunch of, you know, young, ruthless people that just, you know, if there was a fight, they just didn't care. They would just stand up for themselves and yep. wouldn't back down. And that's sort of how they got their rep. Yeah, right. right. Interesting. Yeah, but no, a good bunch of lads. I love them now. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, right. Who was, or who, yeah, who was your biggest influence when you were a young fella? It's a tough one. Uh, my mum probably was, always, she was always around. Like, she was, yep. you know, brother got booted out when I was 17. And it was just me and her from 12 onwards. Yep. Um, yep. Before that, I had, like, because I had no, no dad around. I used to have, like, friends' dads that always would sort of, you know, play a bit of a role here and there. And yep. my uncle as well, uh, Marty. <laughs> Mum's best friend growing up. Uh, he used to take me on camps and he used to take me to Jolan Caves and I used to sort of like hang out with him a lot when I was younger. So like he played that sort of fatherly role a bit too. Yep. And then as I got older, so my brother took that role really. Yeah, yeah, when, yeah. when we started to get closer and yep. stop hating each other, so, we used to hate each other so bad when I was young. Yeah. And now we're all sweet and sort of he takes that role a bit too. So just a few people really, yeah. So you just mentioned that you, you know, you haven't, your father hasn't been around too much. Mm. Is, mm. What has that taught you? I don't know, it's just sort of what I've, what I've always known. You haven't know? known any difference? Any different, no. It's yeah, like, right. if you explain to someone living in the desert where they miss the ocean and they've never yeah. seen it, they don't really know. Yeah, right. So, yeah, I don't think it's really shaped me too much. It's just always been me and mum and, yep. yeah, it's normal. Special bond with mum, eh? Mum's yeah, boy? Yeah, I love mum. Mummy's boy? I fucking love mum. She's the best. <laughs> She's a good lady. Yeah. She's uh, mama's boy, real bad, like hectic. Yeah, right. bad. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's right. I remember me. I remember seeing her in the sheds on your on your debut. Oh, do you remember that? She yeah. was embarrassed me so bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyway, good lady. Um, all right. So you know, play a range of sports when you're a young fella, and then what age do you reckon it was where you were like, "Hey, I'm going to give footy a red mm. hot crack here." Honestly, since I was like five years old, I, used, I every birthday wish was I wish I would be an NRL player. Really? I swear to God, yeah. That's like me. Same thing? Yeah, exact same. I used to, th I used to dream it. Wanted to, that's same. all I wanted to do. Yeah, I was always the same. So I don't really know. Like, I've, literally since I was six, I just always wanted to do it. So it wasn't like an age I'm like, I'm doing it now. Yep. It's always just what I've wanted to do. So it wasn't really an age where I'm like, oh, I'm taking it seriously now. I've always just took it seriously. Always just, you know, yep. wanted to be the best on my team, that sort of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, nice. And then, so did you play Maddie's Cup, SJ Ball, Junior Reps and all that sort of stuff? None of that. I was uh, no. playing Union. Yep. Um, it was funny. I always wished to be an NRL player even though I was playing Union. <laughs> really? Um, yeah. yeah, it was weird. As I used to always watch League and I never watched Union. I couldn't get into the game watching it. I liked playing it, but watching it was a different story. Yeah. Um, and then uh, sort of just, I thought your question was watching again. Uh, it was about, did you play SJ Ball, Maddie's Cup? Yeah, so no, I played... Um, I played like the the uh, union reps, oh, like, like that Randwick. equivalent, yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah, that sort of stuff. Yeah. Uh, and then when I was like fifteen, made like the Sydney East, which is kind of like you represent your zone of region, yep. and then you can make this of Wales and make that. And then sixteen, same thing, Sydney East and schoolboys. When I was eighteen, and that was that was really it. That was all the rep teams I made. Yeah, right. And then you after that, what was the decision around? Leaving Union and then going and playing in the under twenties because you played twenties at South Sydney. Yeah, how'd that come about? Um, I was actually, oh, I really hurt my ankle playing for the twenties Waratahs. Really like snapped it in half. And uh, what position did you play? I started off as a number eight, went to the second row, and then I finished off as a loose a loose head prop. I don't even know numbers in you except for oh, the really? backs. I just know the backs. I don't know the okay. forwards. Well, number eight is like you wear the eight, and it's called like it's like the back. It's like a thirteen in the league. Yeah, right. number eight back of the scrum as used to be me. Yeah. And then any I used to and I finished off playing loose head prop, uh, which is number one. Uh number one in your heart. <laughs> <laughs> um and then you really hurt my ankle. I was working at the Coogee Pav at the time. Yep. Um saw the uh coach of twenties, head coach of the twenties, 
uh, down the pub and he just goes, look, we'll take care of your ankle for you if you want to come across. Because uh, the, the Waratahs said they had no money in the budget for me. They just were like, look, you have to source it yourself. You know, best of luck sort of thing. I was like, oh, cheers, thanks for that one. Really? Yeah, yeah. That's sort of that's the only reason why I left is because they said they had no money in the budget for me. Saw so the head coach at South. He goes, look, we'll take care of you. We'll, you know, get your ankle sorted. Um, get some scans done, get everything. Because I had no idea even how much longer I was injured for. Yeah. Uh, and then went to training probably like a week later and that was that was how I changed. Jeez, that's pretty... That's pretty yeah. Shit go by the Waratahs. Dude. Yeah, like, I don't know. If, I don't think I was like making the team or anything. I was just yeah, sort of yeah. like a sort of reserve. Yeah. yeah. So they didn't really give a shit. So you came across the Souths and mm. then started playing 20s for Souths yeah. and done a few pre-seasons mm. with Souths? I did the... Um, I did... Two. Two? One and a half or two. Yep, yep. We'll say two so I can get an extra week off next year. <laughs> yeah. So, um, how was your time at Souths in the 20s? Was it, do you, would you call it, you know, a successful time? Or a part of your progression? Yeah, part of my progression. Very unsuccessful as a team. We came last two years in a row. Yeah. Um, I remember you telling me that, actually. Yeah, it was so bad. Uh, but, yeah, like, it, I, I sort of just thought league was always... Cause I, I, let, I last played when I was, like, maybe uh, 13, 14, something like that. Yeah. And I just thought league was just, you know, easy, pick, pick the ball up, run hard, play the ball. Yep. But there was like this four man, three man, two man, inside block, outside block. Yep. I had no idea what was going on. So I had to like relearn all that and, you know, that was that was hectic. Um, so it definitely, yeah, it played a part into what I know now for sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. Definitely. And then after Souths, you talk me through your, when your time ended at Souths, you signed, you went up and signed with Redcliffe in, mm. the, in the Queensland Cup. Mm. Um, did you have any other offers or was it like, look, I'm just going to go and apply my trade in Queensland Cup because Queensland Cup is a, is a great competition. Mm. Talk me through that decision. That was literally it. I, I finished at Souths when I was 21 after the worst year of footy I've ever had. Yep. Uh, so there was no offers because I just played so shit the whole year. Um, Wanted to get out of Sydney, wanted to sort of just, you know, bear my own. Um, I knew because of the way that Queensland New South Wales Cup works, New South Wales Cup has one reserve grade side for every first grade side. I uh, knew that I'd get pushed out uh, if I was playing New South Wales Cup. So I thought, no, nah, go to Queensland Cup. The Broncos have like three different feeder clubs. They barely went to Redcliffe. So if I got a starting spot there, I'd be playing cup footy every single week. Yep. That was the motivation behind the decision and just, yeah, worked out very well. It's a good decision. <laughs> good decision, yeah. So your time at Radcliffe was was super successful. Yeah. Um, I know you always talk about it with the, with the boys. And I always bring it up. I don't bring it up. <laughs> oh, um, but made some incredible, you know, some really good mates up there. Um, yeah, talk to me a bit about your time at Radcliffe and what do you remember the most about it? Um, winning the grand final, number one. Yep. Clive Churchill, number two. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, but look, the mates I made, like, uh, I'm, I'm a groomsman at Sam Anderson's wedding. Uh, he, he was my front row partner up there. Yep. Uh, so that, you know, I've got um, Jay Turpin at the Broncos, me and him still, you know, talk, you know. Because he's had his he gun team, guys that were yeah. uh, going on. Na- name a few guys in the, in, that were in there you played with. So we had Tony Staggs. Pretty much if he played, we won. Like, yeah. he was an 18 year old freak, and now he's an even bigger 21 year old freak. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Jay Turpin at nine, who just was. Just whacking props like it was he nothing. Hit, he can hit. Like, oh, it, was just, it was fun playing with him because yeah. he's just like the sh- you know he's the tag in your team. Yeah. People are running at him. He's just folding <laughs> everyone. Like it just gives you energy. It was mad. Uh, we also have yeah, in terms of young players, um, we had Cameron Cullen who played a bit of first grade and yep. was sort of coming back. Uh, who was your, who's like your outside backs, wingers and centers? Because we had Jonas Pearson yep. on one yep. wing. Uh, the other wing was a bloke, Jeremy Hawkins, who was in first grade systems as well, then came back. Yep. And the centres were, yeah, Katoni. And um, who was the other one? We had like Moses Pangai, yep, Tavita's yep, brother. Yep, yep, yep. Bit there. He's my age, I played with him. There you go. Yep, yep. And um, a couple others along the way, like Tom Opacek as well. Yep. In the Eels, so pretty good side. Yeah, right. So the highlight was definitely winning the competition. Oh, yeah, massive. And then you went on to uh, win the State Cup as well. Uh-huh, we got no, you lost the State Cup. Yeah, I did my knee. That's right. So yeah. you won the grand final, yep. won the... Clive Churchill. <laughs> <laughs> it's called a Duncan Hall medal. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then uh, done, done your knee. Mm. So the following week, on top of the world, like you, yeah. we speak about this all the time, how it's just a roller coaster. So wait, wait, before we go into this, yeah. this is your off contract yep. at the end of this year? This year now? No, off the, off the year we're talking about. The year, sorry, the year you won the Queensland Cup, mm. you had signed with Cronulla. Yep. Yeah. Hadn't you? Yeah. And then, so talk me through about what stage of the season did you sign with Cronulla and when you did your knee? So I signed, I'm pretty sure we came, 
won the Mayan Premiership and we got like a week off yep. as a result. Um, and that week off, I think it might have been the first week of finals or something, I flew down to Sydney uh, to see my mum mainly, but also because there was the Sharks chat that I wanted to have. And I thought I was going in for a chat. I ended up signing a contract. Really? Yeah. I'd Who did you chat with? Um, it was uh, everyone. Uh, Shane Flanagan. Yep. Uh, uh, Andrew Gray. Yep. Um, Matty J. <laughs> um, <laughs> like all the staff. Everyone. Literally everyone. Uh, who else? Um, Jordan Atkins. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Jordan. Yeah. Like all, everyone that was there. All the staff members. And they said, you know, we'd love to have you on board. I was like, oh, it sounds good. Yeah, I'd like to come on board. And then boom, contract. I'm like, oh, I'm coming on board. Sweet. Yeah, right. And that was how it happened. And then... Yeah, what was it? Four weeks later, I uh, won the comp. Yep. Um, on top of the world, I was flying to Bali afterwards after the the grand yeah. fly, after the intro super cup, going to Thailand, my brother, like gonna have the best time of my life, and then, boom, all comes crashing down. So you've signed a one year contract with the Sharks. Two years. Two years, sorry. Yeah. Two year contract, my bad. And then four weeks later, do your <laughs> ACL, mm. which is um, I remember hearing the news actually because I remember talking to Flano. And, and I was like, oh, we signed this, we signed this guy. <laughs> we signed this aggressive yeah. hard run. Well, yeah. You should see how, how aggressive he is. He's got long hair, mate. He's going to fit in. He's going to be yeah. sick. Yeah. And yeah. I was like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. And then the, the word came in that you, you got injured. Yeah. And, um, you know, I remember talking to Flannel. Flannel, Flannel was obviously pretty disappointed for you. And mm. um, then when you came down. <laughs> oh, here, we <laughs> here we go. Here we go. Oh, man. One of the greatest, one of the the greatest introductions to a first grade squad I've ever seen because what was it? No, I'm just talking like oh, when you come as into a whole. as a yeah, whole, yeah, like yeah, when, yeah, you, yeah. when you when you know, like kids when the kid starts a new school or when yeah, you, know, yeah. you sign with a new team, it's yeah. like you know you kind of have to you don't you don't you earn your stripes, but yeah. like you get to know people and mm-hmm. what the whole culture is about. And Dolph comes in and Dolph is just straight up being Dolph, like he just. <laughs> <laughs> just being uh, Dolph, being out there, to call, you know, yeah. calling people whatever what it is, and I was loving it. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You didn't tell me at the time, actually. That. <laughs> I was loving it. I was loving yeah. it. But like, how did you find your first year when you came down? And obviously, you know, you missed pretty much the whole year yeah. doing your ACL rehab. You know, what was it like for you when you came back down to the Sharks? Miserable, miserable, yeah, miserable. Jeez. I, like you said, I was being myself. I can't. I tried. Like I, I said, I'll put a bottle on it and just try and be Michelle a bit and just try and you know play the game. <laughs> like, uh, but just, I don't know. It just comes out when it doesn't want. I don't want it to, when I don't want it to. It just comes out of me. Um, yeah. I was rehabbing with Wado, and I found out later on, about a year later, that he specifically asked Shane Flanagan to get me off his rehab time because he was sick of talking to me. <laughs> he didn't want me there. He's like, either get him out of the sharks or get him out of rehab time. You choose. <laughs> Fuck, okay, fair enough. <laughs> um, I thought we were mates. <laughs> <laughs> you so, were mate, I was sweet now. Yeah, I was sweet now. Yeah. Yeah, now we are mates, um, <laughs> luckily. But yeah, it was a very yeah turbulent time. Um, but then literally as soon as I played that first Newtown game, uh, I went out on the piss with the boys afterwards at Northies. Shocker. Yeah. Uh, and after that was sweet. Yeah. You just took that one game and just that camaraderie that builds. Yeah, definitely. And I feel like you you get the most camaraderie from you know when you train together on the field. And, and mm. I understand why it would have been so hard for you to come in to a team and try and learn like the culture and the boys without well like, or you're doing your training indoor mm. in the field you're doing conditioning and rehab yeah. or we're all out in the field and then yeah. you kind of feel like you're not really in with the main group. Absolutely. And then uh, I remember you know you, you did like rehab all year which you just said was which was extremely tough and then you come back at the back end of the year i remember um watching you know you guys in the finals mm. and the once we got knocked out in the first grade and we were watching you guys and yeah. we were like i remember talking to blake braley about this actually about how our reserve grade squad like really got boosted and lifted when the first yeah. grade players w- would, would come and watch would you yeah. agree yeah, it was mad i remember you guys watching against uh i think it was north sydney bears yeah yeah like yeah yep, yep. um and yeah, like, I remember this one dropout I caught, and you guys just yell at me, run it straight. <laughs> yes. I was like, okay, yeah, I'll do it then. Ran it straight as hard as I could, a little bit of a handbrake, but just ran it straight and hard, got absolutely fed. And then I see the sideline, you guys, yeah, we were loving it. Yeah, 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 yeah. so yeah, yeah. It's, it's a mad, it's mad when you're, when you're playing in front of your peers and stuff, and especially the. The first grade lads when you're just a reserve grade player, it's mad playing in front yeah, of those yeah, people. Yeah, yeah, I rate that. I love that. And that's why, like, I think, um, like, I've seen an article the other day from, and quotes from Peter Valenti's talking about all three grades returning mm. all game day. Fit. Which love I agree. That. Love that. What do you, th- yeah, what do you think? Talk to me about it. Well, this is back to that union. When I was playing union, right, um, that's the way it is. That's the yeah. only way it's ever been. You play, you know, you get your third Colts, second Colts, first Colts, Colts under 20s. Yep. And then you got your third grade, 
second grade, first grade. And that's the way it is. So you always have the three grades playing on the same day. And then, you know, you, your first grade boys might get there if you've got some younger lads in the team and, you know, you play in front of these guys that you want to be like, you want to, you know, aspire to be these these older guys. So and knowing that they're watching, it, just, it makes you play harder. Yeah, 100%. 100%. I, I couldn't agree more with you. I think it's... Uh, such a, a positive thing for the game, for the young kids, for the 100%. for clubs to grow. Like even like you know, like you said, when the young fellas go and play, and they know that first graders there are watching, and you know it's a big thing. You want to play well in front of everyone, and um, I think it can you know definitely only only be a positive thing. So you know, your first season, uh, we spoke about you know uh, spent a lot of time in rehab, yeah. come back, uh, played in the New South Wales Cup final series, went on to win. The New South Wales Cup. So you've won back to back news, uh, like you know, New South Wales Cup, Queensland Cup. Talking, talk, to me, talk to me about the final series um, after you beat North Sydney. Went on because you is that the year you guys finished eighth, seventh or eighth, seventh, seventh or eighth. eighth. Yeah. yeah, right. I think actually it was seventh versus eighth. Yeah. Seventh versus eighth. It was hard to say in the uh, interest. Not the interest in the New South Wales Cup Grand Final. Yep. Asked Went, Wentworth Field. Yep, yeah. That, that was a bank west. I remember I was yeah. there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Um, yep. So yeah, we literally every game in that entire final series, including the Bears, and before that, we we did one by like two points on the bell every yeah. single week. Like either we were holding a lead and we just stopped it by you know the last two seconds, or we scored a try in the last. Like, it was ridiculous. Yeah. Um, and then that first game against Wentworth Field, uh, I'm pretty sure we're getting spanked at the start. Um, got it into extra time. Um, yep. Well, yep. Not going point, just extra time. We got the ship over the top. Willie K under the sticks. Yep. Uh, yep. We won. It was like ridiculous that was, again. That was so good. It was it was insane. Yeah. Like that, yeah. the way that happened was just like, especially after the finals one we had was oh, it was it's hard to put into words honestly. And then yeah. the following week uh, against state Burley, championship, state against championship. you yeah. guys looked off that day. We were. You were. We were rubbish. Yeah. I, I've seen this game heaps of times. So I know exactly what happened. So they um <laughs> they they got off to an early lead. Uh, I, don't, I think it was like sixteen four at half time, something like that. Uh, or maybe they scored one more at half time. And then we just surged. Uh, Sione in the corner, boom, started coming back. I was like, boys, this is it. Like, we either take this now or, you know, we die wondering. Yep. A couple more tries. And then, uh, again, McGooley is in the same, exact same way, exact same kick, under the post, that, boom. That bounce. That bounce. Like, it, that was the only way it could have bounced for us to win. It was like That's a right angle bounce. It literally. I, it's going over there and it just went boom. I've never seen that happen ever. Like, ever. And it never happened again. And Jackson Ferris was just right place, right time. He was just chasing the ball and just, you know, when sometimes when you try hard enough, you will the ball into your hands and you get over the line. And after that, second club Churchill. <laughs> <laughs> second uh, club Churchill in three years. Two years. Two years. Two years. Sorry, back to back. Back um, to back. Yeah, in the game that I did my knee in, like, in movie, movie yeah. star stuff. Yeah, yeah. If it was yeah. first grade, they'd be maybe better already, but the third grade, no one cares. <laughs> Oh, how good is that? All right, so that's a, a, a part of your progression, um, you know, up until your NRL debut. So let's talk about that. So you come off an, an off season where you know you had a, a, a great uh, win with the with the Jets in the uh, state premiership, and then you know how are you thinking heading into that preseason where you are like you know are you thinking about round one being in the NRL team? Is that your motivation? It's the motivation. I wasn't sure if it was going to happen or not. Yep, uh, and then. Priz left after December. So this is, yeah, this is heading into the 2020 season, yeah. Yes, exactly, yeah. It's yep. 2019 yep. pre-season for 2020 season. Uh, Matt Pryor decides to go to England, and then I go, oh my God, this could be, this could be it. Like, this is, because I wasn't really seeing myself in the starting side before then, in the yep. 17. Yep. Um, he goes, and I remember Braden really had a chat to me, he goes, oh, you, this this could be you here. Like, this could be, you could be in the side here. And I was just going... I could be like I was like agreeing like yeah this yeah. could be did, me. Did it give you motivation to be like to look like you know massively yeah yeah massively and even after the, like what happened in the um Intrust Super Cup the, the against Burley I flew straight away to Bali partied up for sure but then yep. went to Thailand afterwards and trained for ten days before preseason uh, and came back flying because I knew that like this if I want to have a you know this, if I want to debut this is the year to do it yep and yeah um coming around I think it was I remember Bomber told me. Uh, I think it was in. Do you want to talk about this now? Do you want to do some more? <laughs> no, 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 that's good. Yeah, go on, go on. Uh, so it was the last training session of preseason. We played the trial in PNG, done the nines. Yep. I was just mad, eh? Yeah. <laughs> I was just mad fun. Um, and then it was like the last training session. He read out the team one to seventeen. Gets this to fourteen, fifteen. I'm going. Oh, come on, come on. Sixteen. 
Toby Rudolph. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. I remember yeah. him saying that after a session. But um, yeah, so how were you when you found out off form? Obviously, it's a massive. Um, it's a massive thing. Did he just tell you? Is that the first you, you found yeah, out, or that was how I found out? Yeah, was right. Number sixteen, Tabor Rudolph, and I was just elated. Yeah, who's the first person you called? Mum. Yeah, I called mum first. What's um, she like? Oh yeah, she was screaming on the phone. Oh my god, Tabor! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah standard sort of mum chat. Um, and then I think I called. I think we called Barumi. Yeah. Um, uh, brother and stuff as well. Like just sort of everyone, the whole family, all mum, auntie, just everyone gave yeah. me gave me a call and let them know what was going on. Yeah. So how how did you feel then into your NRL debut? Were you a little bit nervous? Could you sleep throughout the week? Were you anxious? Talk to me about that. Yeah, I was. Um, I thought like I'd be shitting myself, but I was actually pretty sweet. Um, I think I was more nervous coming back playing for um the Jets because when you're sort of like not to sound like a Derek, but when you sound like when you're like a big dog in the in the intra super cup and the result is more dependent on how you play. Yeah. You know, I'm more nervous for that sort of thing. But when I'm playing with players like yourself, like better players, you know, that are much better than me, um, I don't feel as nervous. I don't feel the result. It hangs in the balance of how I play. You just so want to do your job. Just do my job. Yep. And it was, yep. you know, there's no pressure really because, like, no matter how I play, as long as I don't play terribly, I, I go good because yep. I'm playing NRL. Yep. So, yeah, it's sweet as. Yeah, I love that. So you play pretty much every game bar one in 2020. <laughs> and... Um, Earning matches as well, so mm. it's a pretty decent year for you. Yeah, you know, <laughs> couple, uh, couple of issues you guys on the contract. <laughs> yeah, oh, oh, I remember, um, I remember getting matches actually. How when good I, is when that? I first came into figure out, oh my grouse, you it's know, and grouse. every game counts. Yeah, but um, you know, as I mentioned, you, you missed one game, which was the last game of the year. Mm. You know, I think you were ca- niggling, uh, carrying a little niggling injury, and Bomber comes up to you and goes, Dolph. I'm going to rest you this weekend. Mm. And that means that you're not getting paid a match payment. Yeah. So what do you do? <laughs> oh, yeah. I uh, went up to Bomber. I think I told a few people I wasn't playing. And they just, I don't know if they G'd me up or not, but I ended up going up to Bomber and going asking him if I could have the match payment. Because I wasn't not picked, I was rested. <laughs> so I asked him if I could have the matchy regardless. I asked um, him for the matchy. Yeah. Which just say to me, Bomber, put me on the bench. And like, you know, if you need me, put me on. But if you don't need me, just limit my minutes. Do you think I didn't do that? <laughs> did you? Yeah, I, did, I tried everything. Nothing worked. I didn't get it. Oh, man. Yeah, no, I'll, I'll rate that. Um, yeah. Who was the toughest individual opponent you faced throughout 2020? Hmm. Um... Someone who would just keep coming, who was pretty aggressive, relentless in the middle. Not necessarily Anyone? aggressive, relentless, but uh, Payne Haas strikes. Yep, uh, strikes my mind. Sort of uh, hard to tackle. Just yeah. so hard to tackle. He yep. just like he puts a he palm in the face and like kind of like jab me in the face, made me really angry. Um, <laughs> but he just sort of holds his big two meter arm out in front of you, and if you don't get it, like he just sort of like just the way he steps, it's sort of hard. He doesn't really run into you. Yep, he just yep. sort of like steps around you. Yep. So for that reason, it'd be it'd probably be him. Um, it was, it was funny, I was, t- I was telling all the boys beforehand that I gave him a bath when I was playing for Redcliffe and he was playing for Wyndham. I was like, yeah, I scored him, we'll do it again. I swear to God, just, yeah. <laughs> I smoked him last time and then, yeah, he ended up getting one over me. So, yeah, probably him. You're right. What do you think the biggest difference from reserve grade to first grade is? Um, Physicality is one. Yep. There's a lot more sort of, you know, bigger bodies that can go all day. Um, there's only a few in reserve grade. Um, that the speed of it, like everyone says, tactical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, the skill side of it as well, yep. a lot cleaner. Um, yeah, a lot more passes going to chest instead of going to ground, and yeah, sort of all that just in, just you know combines for just a much faster, just more hectic game that you got to yep. th- you know yep. always be thinking, always be on it. You can't really, you know, you can't have a tackle off. You get to have a tackle off. You get found out. Yeah, the, the smart players will always see you stop moving and yep. move the ball to the space. So they're the biggest ones. Who's been the biggest help? Uh, teammate of of ours that's helped you in your game since you got to the Sharks and to where you are now. Um, biggest help from the teammate. Uh, what what comes to mind is is Woodsy's advice, which um, because I'm sort of a frantic person and player, I guess in a way, he just helps you to relax. Just stop, you know, stop trying to do everything. You know, you, you're not there to do everything. You're there for a certain job. Just you know, run the ball up and tackle. You know, you don't have to always be putting pressure on doing this, doing that. So just, yeah, just breathing and just relaxing. You're not trying to do everything at once. Yep. Um, and then also the passing game, probably Woodsy as well. Definitely not you. Oh, <laughs> you definitely had to you. bring that up. Oh, well, you know. Oh, I wasn't going to bring this up. Oh, well, I'm glad I did. Oh, I feel slack. Tell the listeners. Tell the listeners oh, what happened. Oh, my God, I feel slack. Go on, then. All right, this is the first time I've ever done this, actually. So we're playing you it. You saved it for me. Oh, I did. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, I apologise. Yeah, All right. Yeah. We were doing a drill at training. We are playing left versus right, and we were mm. running a play, and it was our ball, and Toby was – we were running this play when Toby was to pass the ball to me. And so Toby got a pass from Blake, Braley, dummy half, and Toby dropped it before he went to pass to me. And then um, after he dropped it, I told Toby to basically get out of the way and swap with someone else so he wouldn't have to pass the ball. And he, and he said to me, no, 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 I'm sweet. And then I was like, oh, my God, I can't believe I just did that. Like, that's oh. doing nothing for my teammates' confidence <laughs> right now. And I went up to Toby after the session and he said to me, um, Man, I can't believe you just did that. And I was like, bro, I am seriously, I'm so sorry. Like, I, I fully, I on. just did nothing for, for, for your conference. But hey, like, I really do apologize. For That's that. that sweet. That's, you know, I love you. Yeah, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> That's just shit, guy. Oh, so Buzz, um, obviously you had had a mint 2020 season, uh, played really well, came onto the scene. Um, you were off contract. You re-signed with the Sharks for one season. Mm. Why, why the one year? I just sort of wanted to back myself. I uh, just sort of wanted to sort of, yeah, I, I sort of felt uh, what I did in 2020, um, there's a lot more to go, a lot more to build on my game. I didn't want to settle into a contract that I, you know, felt I might have outgrown. I love that. So I just sort of back myself, just want to see, you know, and if it doesn't if it doesn't work out, look, that doesn't work out. I mean, you know, it, it's entirely up to me and I can live with that. I can live, you know, if I fail, then it's up, I failed. Then, you know, yep. So yep. it's just on my back. Pretty much just entirely, I just wanted it to be up to me. Yeah, pretty no, much. I love that. I, mm. I, I fully love that. Mm. And you also just recently got announced in the Blues mm. uh, yeah. emerging emerging squad, emerging where blues. you spent a day the other day uh, with in the Blues in a sanctum, mate. How was that? And you know, what would you make of it? You know, getting selected in in that squad. Yeah, it was like it was a really nice compliment just after the, the you know year in first grade that we, that I had. Um, uh, just sort of yeah, nice to be recognised for the efforts that I put in, and it's always nice to be. In, you know, I, I love the Blues. Like you know, who doesn't that grows up in New South Wales? You know, you're a die-hard Blues supporter. So to be in the same breath as some of the Origin players out there, it's you know, it's a massive, massive compliment. Um, so then uh, the day in itself was pretty mad. Went out to uh, the facility out in Homebush, which I'd never been to before. Didn't know it existed. Uh, the Blues training ground. Sure, they saw the um, you know, the, the, the world's longest tunnel that like, leads, leads up from there into Homebush, which is crazy. Uh, the gym, all that sort of stuff. Freddie just talked to us about how, pretty much about how, we ha- how much we hate Queensland and why they're just Derricks. And I just <laughs> <laughs> couldn't agree more with everything he was saying. So, yeah, it was just two hour chat about, we had this little quiz on as well, which I came last in about Blues history, which I couldn't believe came last in that. Yeah. Uh, but it was really good. Um, good to meet some of the other guys from other teams as well. Um, yeah, just an all in all good experience, really. Yeah, beauty. All right, back on your back, back quickly. Sorry, I just skimmed over it. Um, yeah, you signed a one year extension with the Sharks, but there was a, a little bit of talk throughout the year about you potentially going to the Warriors. Mm. Um, talk to me a bit about what happened there. Yeah, um, so I got a very lucrative contract to go to the Warriors. Uh, I think it was before, but before I played a game in twenty twenty. Um, went over to New Zealand with my mum to have a look at the facilities and have a look at where I'd be living and all sort of stuff. And I honestly thought I was going over for a free trip, but they really like, yeah, you know, I was like, this is mad. I actually really enjoyed the trip and everything that they had to offer and just the country had to offer as well. I went back with a really hard decision to make and ended up signing a, um, a letter of agreement, I think it's called, uh, agreed, agreed to terms. So I signed that, didn't sign a contract though. And then coronavirus happened. Um, my brother was living in Bali at the time. And I was like, fuck, I'm going to have to leave mum here by herself. Uh, on top of that, my old mum, um, good dog, almost grandma in German, uh, she got diagnosed uh, with cancer. And I was sort of thinking, like, it's probably isn't the best time now to, to move away and, and, you know, leave my family behind. And caught up with the Warriors and told them the bad news. And it was a bit of a to and fro at one point. It was a bit of like a, you know, you're getting on the plane. It was a bit of like, well, I'm not getting on the plane. Like, yeah, you are. But no, I'm not. And that went on for about an hour. Um, <laughs> It's pretty. It's very intense. Yeah. Well, essentially, you've made the decision for family reasons. Yeah, I just wanted to stay for my family. Be, be around closer to to family. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Which and is totally understandable. Mm. And I was keen as to go over at the time. It's just you yeah. know things didn't work out that way, and just yeah. want to be here for mum and mama, which yeah. I'm, I'm glad that I've done. Yeah. Yeah. No, I love that. Mm. Um, well, mate, I'm I'm happy to have you. I'm happy. To, I'm happy that you stay. <laughs> Are you sure? I'm happy that you stay. I don't know. Oh, there you go. I'm not Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Hey, we have to oh, leave. We have to leave that in the past. We're okay. good now. You right? apologise. You're right. Well, I apologise. I'll stop bringing it up. Sorry. You stop bringing it up. I yeah. didn't bring it up today. No, I, I wasn't going to. It was so, somehow the, the questions you were asking <laughs> led me to that point. So maybe you sort of subconsciously did. I don't know. Anyway, uh, who's your favourite teammate? Uh, so I had to put it down to one person. 
Um, oh, you know, I'll put it in one person. Sifa. <laughs> he, I love watching him play. That's yep. it. Yep. Watching him just crunch people, yeah. watching him run over people. Oh, I'm so glad he's in my team, not the other team. 100%. I would hate to tackle him so much. He reminds me of a bit of Conrad Harrell. Mm. Just the build, the, thi- yeah. the thickness. He's built low to the ground. He's built low to the ground. Yeah, he's yeah. extremely hard to tackle. Yeah. You can't go half ass into him because you'll bump no. you straight off. Easily. Yeah. So I just love being around him. I love defending next to him. Yeah. Because I know that if they miss me and go into him, they're getting crunched, they're getting <laughs> smoked. I just, yeah. So, yeah. Ziffer, for sure. Yeah. Beauty. All right. What does Dolph do in his spare time? Um, read what poetry. Are you, what are your hobbies? Fine art. Uh... Nah, fuck that. Play that out. That's fucking <laughs> shit. That's fucking shit. <laughs> Play that out. That's fucked. Uh, <laughs> what are yeah. your hobbies? I like to um, I like going surfing. I only started doing that the last two years. A mate of mine sort of teach, uh, taught me, John Sutton from South. Yep. Um, he sort of got me on the board. It's taken me about a year and a half to stand up consistently. Um, I'm, I'm still sort of you know, hit and miss, but that's one massive thing I love doing, big hobby of mine. Uh, Playing a bit of guitar. Um, um, I've got my mum's dog that I walk as much as I can. I help her out. Um, my brother's dog, who I hang out with a lot too. So yeah, dog surfing and guitar is probably the main three things. Yep. Yeah, beauty. Watching the old uh, Newtown Grand Final. Yeah, it counts as a hobby. I, don't <laughs> know. I love watching that game so much. Oh, I love that. Um, who's the most unhygienic teammate in your opinion? Mm. Who was his ringworm? Was it Blake? Yes. Well, or Sean. Sean's yeah. had it a few times. Yeah, but I can't say Sean because he helped me out recently. So, <laughs> yes. so yeah, uh, I'll go with Blake. I'll okay. go with Blake. Should yeah. we go into that? Uh, if you want. Should we say it was before training? Nah. We can say, how about we just I'm say... I'm not going to say it before training. I'm going to give a fuck. Okay. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> so, yeah. So what happened with Sean? So um, it was, we had three days off uh, two weeks ago, I think it was, because we've been training so hard. It was adaptation week and... Yeah. Right, Saturday, Sunday, Monday week, off. Yeah. It was down week, sorry. No, adaptation week. Yeah, sorry, week. My yeah, yeah. Um, so I decided to, you know, live it up. <laughs> <laughs> Have a few nights out. Have a few nights out. Um, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Uh, Monday rolled around. I was at a, a party in Burren uh on this unreal property, this like, you know, waterfront, mad mansion. It was unreal. Huge vibe for a Monday. Oh, it was grouse. So Jeez. grouse. Day after Australia Day, so... It was, um, I think it was the day off for most people as well. Tuesday, Australia Day was the day off for everyone else. And I was stuck in Byron. It was like 9.30. I was like, I'm probably, uh, probably can't get home now. This is a bit hectic. I've had way too much to drink. Uh, um, and and then, what training in the morning? Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> training in the morning. I know I'll be fine. I can pull it together. Uh, so I gave, uh, did I message you or not? No. no. I knew you'd say no anyway. You said that in the morning you say I would, no. I would never say no. You told me on Tuesday you'd say no. No. Yeah. Well, <laughs> that is what you said. Well, word it's word. like I've got two young children. Sean is a young kid. Yeah, true. But right. I don't have an outhouse. No, you don't. Flat. No, you don't. You're right. Okay, it's fair enough. So I messaged um, you, Wado. You didn't message me. Sorry, I didn't message you. I messaged Wado, Woodsy. Did Wado reply? Yeah. Woodsy reply? <laughs> No. Oh. Wado said absolutely not. Missy said no. <laughs> uh, Woodsy didn't reply because his phone, he says he turns his phone on aeroplane mode, which is a very convenient excuse. Yeah. Um, I messaged uh, Teague as well, and he just gave me the shit. So I was like, Sean's the last option. And yep. Sean put me up in his uh, amazing pool house, blasted the aircon on for me. It was so hot. Yeah. Had a shower, and I just, you know, the gratitude. There is there is a bit of man love there now. For, that was that is a big lift. Like giving me a house to sleep in. That's you know, that's massive. So he helped me out massively. I love that man. So Could have been you. Do you feel that because Sean gave you that bed for the night that yeah. you're like closer indebted to Sean? Oh, yeah. I was indebted to him. Yeah, I'm close to him for sure. Like yeah, that's yeah. you know, it uh, creates better friendships and better connection. Hundred percent. Like yeah. that's a you know, it's, it's not just a big favor. It's just like you know, it's just. Look after your teammate. Look after your teammate. That's the biggest yeah. way, to, best way yeah. to put it. Looking yeah. after me in my time of need. Yeah. And I hope that one day I can return the favour in some way. But Sean's yeah. a bit of a nerd, so I don't <laughs> think that... <laughs> well, you pulled up, sweet. Like, the next day... I was fine. I, Shawnee was telling me the story. You were completely fine. Like, I didn't yeah. even know. You yeah. had full kit on. You borrowed some training kit or someone. Yeah, Went out there. Tra- you trained the house down. Yeah. You had a, a great session. And That's like, Who cares? <laughs> I know. Oh, I, I, I don't care. Uh, like, if, you, if you're training well... Mm. 
And it's that time of the year, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, and also, like, I wasn't, you know, I wasn't getting full blackout drunk. Like, yeah. I knew yeah. to sort of pull up yeah. in, in yeah. a yeah. way. Yeah. 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 But I did drink a lot. But I knew that I'd be fine in the morning, and I yeah. was, so. Yeah. And that's not every weekend, it's a one-off. So, on teammates that would never let you down, and obviously Sean's just giving you a big assist there. He massively, yeah. Can, is there a teammate in our squad that comes to mind who you would feel would never let you down? Blake. Blake Braley? Yeah. A uh, couple examples. Um... People are going to think I'm a mad pisshead now. telling the story. <laughs> it's the same story again, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, he's, oh, he's I was giving you a bed to sleep in. Similar, not not exactly the same. So, stuck in Cronulla um, after a night out. Didn't drive in. Well, it's uh, hard when, when you when you come to Cronulla and yeah. you, you have a few drinks. Like you live in Maruba. Like yeah, it's, 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 it's easy for away. me to just get home from Cronulla. Massively, any, yeah. Most of us boys here who live in the Shire. Yeah. Plus, I'm a tired ass with Uber, so I just don't, <laughs> <laughs> don't want to pay him that much money. But yeah, um, I stayed out. What happened? It was it was after the pa- Panthers game, and um, had a big night. Got a lift in from my mate um, to recovery to walk around for an hour, and then had no way of getting back home. And just he's done this like three or four times before this as well. I was like Blake, I need you. And without question, without fail, drive to Maroubra. Yeah, sweet. No like no dramas. Never even like one bit of whinge. Never one bit of neg. He's just always sweet to do it. So yeah. for that reason, Blake Braley. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. I love that. I rate that. I'd second that too. I, I, Blake and Jaden, both great fellas, come from a great family. So, hundred um, percent. All right. Next question for the Dolph mm. is, and this is something we quite often will joke about: is um, mm. you know, fitness and mm-hmm. you know, preseason, and sometimes yeah. there's you know, sessions where the the days are extremely hard, and um, you know, you just have to rip in. But there's times when we're running or we're doing fitness, and it's like you get to a point where like it's it, it, you're pushing your body and yourself mm. to the maximum it can go. Mm-hmm. And you know, we, me and you, quite often, like I said, we we laugh, we laugh about it and try yeah. and joke off each other to try and get some energy. But what do you what are you thinking at the moment when you're doing fitness and you're absolutely like dying? You're hurting hard. Well, today I literally thought about a conversation that we had. And it was with re- regards to, you said that no matter how bad it is, you think about there's someone else that's hurting way more than me. Yep. Today they didn't help one bit because <laughs> I know for a fact I was hurting oh, the far most. hurting the most. Like I hit, I hit the wall. <laughs> I found it. The wall is real. It exists. It is <laughs> fucking torture. Well, do you want to tell the listeners a bit of assist that I gave you today? Do you want to tell the story? About the assist you gave me? Yeah, like, you know, when we were defending on the trial line. Oh, what? Just come on, Dolph? Yeah. Yeah, just, no, it was mad. Like, it was yourself, Willie K, mainly speaking to me, uh, a bit of Wado, just like, I, I was, it was after, just after the fitness drill we'd done and I was running with my head down into the ground, just looking at the ground the whole time, just like wanting to quit and dig holes <laughs> for a living. <laughs> Going, footy is not for me, sucks. <laughs> oh, so hard. And then... We went straight into a 20 tackle drill, so we're making 20 tackles in a row. The boys see I'm struggling, and yeah, yourself, Willie Cage, come on, Dolph. Five more tackles, you got this, you know, you're sweet, you're sweet. And I was sweet, it was all good. <laughs> but yeah, yeah I, th- I, was, I wasn't I was too sweet, like I wasn't good, yep. but I was manageable. So thank you, Chadwick, for doing that. So what does the future have for Dolph? Off contract this year, looking mm. for a big year. Mm. Um, you know, what does the future in the NRL have for Dolph? Who knows, I, you know. Obviously, I want to win a grand final, a real one. Yep. Um, I want to play for my state for sure. Um, even more than that, I just want to just sort of, you know, be a consistently good teammate. I just want to be someone that uh, people enjoy playing with. Yep. That's sort of the biggest compliment you can have, I feel, in the game. 100%. Yeah. Like, you don't want to be sort of, you know, someone who's like, oh, Dolph's out there. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, Dolph's out there. So, just something like that. Just, I don't know, like, you know, how long... I'm 25 now. Uh, who knows how long I've got left, but for as long as I can enjoy the game, as long as I can play it, I just want to play it to the best of my ability, as hard as I can, um, and just enjoy every bit of the ride that it has to offer. And you mentioned before when we were talking about the ride, about mm. the roller coaster ride mm. of rugby league, and it is, hey, like oh, up I, and down. It's, it's, it's up and down. So I want to know how you ha- how you deal with adversity or setback because obviously in our game like there's highest of highs and there's mm. lowest of lows and it's about f- trying to find that medium where you know you don't celebrate your wins too much you don't take your losses too hard mm. you don't take poor form or you know injury or getting dropped too ba- too hard and you mm. don't like get too far ahead of yourself when you you know sign a good contract play rep footy blah 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 how do you how do you find the roller coaster in that regard Oh, it's it's intense. I mean, it's it's the most sort of ridiculous job you can have because 
your mood is entirely based on your job. Like if you're winning games, yeah. you know, your life's going good. You're having a good time. Yeah. 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 If life's going bad, you're losing games. Just, you know, you're training shit, you're playing shit. Just life's just shit. So yeah. I think finding things outside the game is one massive way to sort of, you know, negate that happening. Yep. Yep. Um, you know, you, you yourself got the Canal Beer Co. You got, you know, this podcast, you've got plenty of things to sort of keep you busy. And that's what I try and find as well. Yep. So, Love you know, that. the hobbies that I have, like the surfing, the guitar, the dog stuff, like that, that, that all helps me out massively. And just seeing family all the time. Like I love being here with my family, seeing what I want I can, when I want, when I want to, seeing mum, my brother. You know, my brother was in Bali recently, lived there for three months, and it was a bit weird not having him here because uh, we are so close, like you said. So just seeing family is just is, is massive for me as well. Yep. Um, yeah. Uh, anything else you want me to touch on? I, that I, I love that. I, I feel like it's you, you find that balance between life and football. Mm. That really brings things down to earth. For me, anyway. Um, just a quick question on social media. Mm. I feel like social media is just a massive sort of uh, massive thing these days, especially for us as athletes being so accessible. Especially mm. like you know when we play well, it's like people are like, yeah, yeah, you play so well. Like, and then you pl- you lose and you don't play your best. It's like people just attack you. How do you um, how do you handle that apart? I guess social media and also like the the media as a whole as well. Do you read too much into it, or are you just someone who just like Tries to keep it at, at, at arm's length. I try to keep it at arm's length, uh, but my mum and my brother are always the first ones with the newspaper articles of me in it to, to, to send me a photo and show me straight away. Uh, if there's bad stuff, I just think they wouldn't show me. So I, I try to keep it away. Um, what was the question about social media as, as a whole? Yeah, as like well? how, how do you find social media? Do you Are you someone who would, after a loss, would go on Instagram and try and, and check your DMs or... or to see messages from people or are you someone who's just like don't read DMs don't really care what anyone has to say yeah right no I, I, well DMs for me is, I don't look at the DMs for about footy I look at the DMs about other things because uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do- hey, Dolph's single eh? yes. anyone out there alright Dolph single 25 uh, earning good money playing <laughs> NRL rugby league alright all the ladies out there yeah, long yeah. hair hey yeah. look if anyone's wants. out there wants some loving I've got plenty to give that's all, <laughs> that's all I want to say uh, uh, it's um, oh yeah, I don't really look into the oh, people read comments and that that is the worst yeah. thing you can do why are you reading the comments nah, like nah. that's just gonna nah. whatever they say good or bad it's just not gonna help you one bit yeah like it's just ridiculous some of the young lads do it and I say what are you doing like why are you reading that I'm, gl- I'm glad that you said that to yeah. the young lads because when I first started in my career it's like social media it was there but it wasn't mm. massive as it is today mm. and now I feel like I feel like young kids who come into NRL these days like they need to be clued up on how to use social media oh, for because sure. they're yeah. like there's so many platforms they're so accessible yeah. and you're right because you know I've spoken about before in the podcast about seeing some teammates of ours mm. go straight off the field on their phone mm. read messages blah yeah. blah blah and it can affect it affects them mentally and Massively. um how do you find getting critiqued as a rugby league player every single day um Tough sometimes, but I just got to. The one thing I keep in my mind is that if anyone's sort of, you know, uh, saying anything negative about my game, coaches, staff, all that sort of stuff, it's to make me better. Yep. So you can't take it too personally. Like, we're, we're in a business at the end of the day. And if anyone's saying anything about my game, it's the only, the only reason, unless I'm taking the piss, is to make me a better player. So I keep that in my mind and, you know, don't let anyone take anything too personally towards yep. me. Um, before, like last year, I was told not to pass. I let it pass. <laughs> now I've got a passing license. I'm not saying anything. Uh, <laughs> um, so, you know, uh, this whole preseason, we're working my passing game just so I can, you know, give that pass when it's needed. Yep. Uh, I'm not looking to go to be Joey Johns or anything like that, but just to be. Just trying to get better. Just trying to get better. Definitely. Just trying to get better. So, yeah, not taking it too personally. Yeah, I love that. All right, Dolph, last question uh, for today is mm. what would Dolph be doing if he wasn't playing football? Yeah, it's a tough one. It's um, what's your dream job? Dream job? I I wouldn't be working. I I'd, <laughs> <laughs> I'd uh, what dream job? No, I've never heard of. It. I wouldn't be doing, it. I wouldn't be doing it. <laughs> all the jobs I've done have been torture. Um, I it'd be hard now in this current climate, but uh, I'd travel the world. I want to see everything. I want to do everything. Um, yep. I'll just take my life savings and just blow it all traveling. Literally, that's what I do. Uh, and then after that. I've got no idea. I know I might work as a lifeguard for a bit. <laughs> That'd be all right. <laughs> work on the beach. I'd be pretty sick. Uh, um, d- you just quickly touched on some um, jobs that you, you've done before and I've heard you say how appreciative you are to play in the NRL and mm. have this job because you know, you've know you done things like get up at 5am and, mm. and work jobs that are just 
you know, really, really hard. Talk to me a bit about your appreciation for playing or being a professional athlete. It's, yeah, like I said, I think I said already said it's the best job in the world. Yep. Um, you know, some young kids don't really know uh, how good they have it. Uh, I've been in the workforce since I was 13, being a trolley boy, Kmart, uh, referees marshal, uh, coach, lollipop man for, for a week. Um, I was a handyman for a bit, I was a concierge. I was, uh, then, I, then I was 18 and started doing like real jobs, like labouring for a year and a half, uh, rubbish removal truck. Um, after that, I was going to move to Brisbane. Um, I was a landscaper for a month, luckily work ran out because it was so hard. I was just going to quit anyway, but luckily work ran out. And the worst I've ever had was a door-to-door salesman for HelloFresh in Brisbane. I was wearing an apron, <laughs> <laughs> knocking on people's doors. I want to buy some HelloFresh, get the door slammed in my face. No, you don't. Sweet, all good. There was, <laughs> one, there was one week I made 50 bucks for the whole week because I made one sale the whole week. Wow. Because after that, I was like, I can't do this anymore. And then I was a truck driver. That was fit. I really enjoyed that. It was just sort of... Six months of cruising around, going to Woolies as much as I wanted, listening to my own music, my own food. And then yep. now I'm a footy player getting paid to go train, to, to hang out with my mates, to you know, take the piss with all of them and have a laugh and you know, get paid good money for once ever. This is nice. You know, money is nice sometimes. Yep. Um, yep. As, you know. So, yeah, I just sort of, if I'm ever, you know, like today when it was so hard and you, know, you don't want to be there, I want to dig holes for your living. I just think back to the days when I was getting up at four thirty, driving trucks for a living, yep, yep. wearing a fucking apron. Yep. I probably can't say that word. Can I say that word? <laughs> yeah, you can say it. Wearing an apron, um, and I just think, like, yeah, I'm one of the luckiest men alive. Yeah. To be honest, yeah, I love that. All right, Dolph, Maz, thank you so much for coming on today. Thanks for having me, eh? Really appreciate, appreciate it. it. All right, guys, that's it. Another episode for the Chad Townsend Show. Uh, make sure you check out the show on Spotify, YouTube. And you can also check it out on iTunes as well. We'll see you on the next episode.